everybody this is Amy thanks so much for stopping by my channel today I'm going to show you how I paint a yellow hibiscus theme design on this I guess vase candle holder candy holder whatever you would like to use it in your home decor um, it has multiple uses I have gone ahead and already pre-base coated this with a product it's called frosted glass and it's by folk art it is made for glass and ceramic and I used one of my favorite brushes and this is a glass art brush by dynasty it's a one quarter inch I guess what I would think of as a flat brush but the as you can see these are different these give such good quality coverage when you're trying to base coat. I'm going to do a separate tutorial on applying this paint because when I was actually looking at how I became aware of the paint, they were actually uh, pouncing it on you know, with a sponge type of uh, application. This, I just used this brush. So, anyways, I like how it turned out. This is going to be my first time ever painting on top of this product, so we'll see how that goes. I will be using a number 12 flat brush, a number 10 flat brush, and then a script liner number 2 by Plaid. These are all one stroke brushes, and then a dotting stylus tool. The colors of this project are going to be Thicket. Cinnamon, Moon Yellow, Pale Yellow, Wicker White, and last but not least, Happy Green. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to be using the smaller of the two brushes to do the actual um, flower petals. I will be multi-loading them using the pale yellow and the cinnamon and then veering I will actually tip my brush on the pale yellow side into the moon yellow and I apologize of course just as I'm getting ready to do this my furnace is not kicking on all right so let's go ahead and get started here I am just doing that wiggle pattern and by that I mean, I know people like to see how I load it, load my brush, but I am just dipping in and doing the double loading, and then I tip into the extra color that I want to add. All right, and I'm going to keep turning my vase as I work, and I want to try to get as much coverage in the center of the flower because I really don't want to have a big opening because my center is just going to be basically a stem for the stamen and here we go I'm just putting it down putting down and just wiggling the brush all right then I'm going to continue on doing these and if you have watched my videos before you know that I do like to work in odd numbers so that's what I will be doing on this one also is working on odd numbers so I'm planning to have go over this again planning on having three of the flowers and then a couple buds are partially opened, they're not really buds per se, but they're partially opened flowers. Let's see how I'm kind of varying that color. The one thing nice about adding a base coat, and I had done this on some of my wine glasses this past year, is that you're going to get some added protection right off the bat because you have the base coat. It also, if you're new to coat, new to painting on glass, it doesn't make the surface so slippery. So it actually can be a little bit easier for you to paint. 
you know, just some advice on that because painting on glass is not hard. I like it, but for some, because it is so so slippery and it moves so much so easily, it does make it a little bit more difficult for some to paint on. Now, for me, that was a benefit. For some, that's not not such a benefit. So, just so you're aware of the difference there. And I'm just, like I said, putting my brush down and wiggling it and pulling it. If you want to practice this before you paint on glass, I do recommend highly practicing on wax paper as it will give you a very similar experience to the surface of painting on glass. And then that way you'll be used to that feeling when you get to actually painting a project. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is put in these partially open flowers, as I mentioned. And again, I'm just putting double loading, and if you want, I didn't tip into the, to the school bus yellow, but I'm going to coming back in. And I could just push it down and go like this. I'm just trying to do a little bit slower so you can see. It's just pushing down, pushing down, pushing down, and then you pull back. You can leave it at two or you or three. You have one. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Now on this, I'm going to make another bud come down like it's or partially open flower like it is hanging down. You could have it going up like say the same direction but on the opposite side you know, up here so it is kind of matches the other side but I'm not going to do that I'm going to make it look a little bit different all right so then the next thing I'm going to do is take my take my number two strip liner and load it with some of the uh, thicket green and then I can actually tip it a little bit with the happy green. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pull my center, a little stamen out here. And then pull a little, little piece down here like that. And then I can go back in and add some of the happy green and just kind of reverse it a little bit. However you want to do it, it's perfectly fine. And then on this one, I'm going to have it go this direction. Sorry, I'm going off camera here. Just realized that. Just touching it and pulling it down. I'm going to reach in here and grab some of that happy green. Kind of soften it out here a little bit. It's kind of hard for me to go the opposite direction and do better going the first direction that I was hitting. However, we can't always go that way, right? Alright, and then on this one I'm just going to kind of bring it down. So I don't really want them running into each other. You know, for the purpose of painting, you could have them going all the same direction. I kind of like to make them going as if they're going in different directions really totally up to you and your preference. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is double load the number 12. Now, when I say double load, I am going to be doing the thicket and the happy green together, but I'm also going to tip a little bit into the yellow. I'm going to come back here and start working. I could do, use a smaller brush for this part if I wanted, but I'm going to come back here and, and start tapping in to add the piece that connects me to my stem. And I can turn it in other directions to bring in different colors if I want. Thanks, Furnace, for shutting off. And just kind of tip it a little bit. And bring it down 
and then I'm just going to have it go into like these flowers. I'm not going to have a big stem coming down like I do on some of them. I'm just going to have them like they're a bunch of like a bunch of flowers together. If that makes sense. And then we're going to turn this around, do the same thing. And like I said, the coverage is so much easier when you have a base coat. If you've watched any of my gloss painting, my like wine gloss painting from earlier in the year, I did a lot of base coating because I know that for those type of projects, the thicker your paint is, the more adhesion and the, the better they will uh, be as far as the paint staying on. They're more durable that way. That's what I'm looking for. That's the word I'm looking for is durability. All right, I can turn this around, kind of do the same thing. I really didn't on this one. But it's just, you get the point. It's The point is, is to get some other color into this so it's not just all darker green or light green. It just gives it some more interest when you're seeing something else in it. All right, so let's move on. And I think I'm going to have to put out some more of the thicket. Probably one of my biggest shoes besides wicker white. I love, I love thicket. Not, not a big fan of some of the other greens. One green is more like a Christmas green to me. All right, so let's go here and start the leaves. Now I'm just going to kind of do a couple little strokes. I'm not trying to do like a poinsettia leaf. Well, that kind of makes me think I am the way I just did that. I just want there to be points, points on the leaf so it's not just like a bit basic wiggle leaf. It has, pull some of this paint off of here, it has some sharpness to the, the sides. I don't want it to be plain and I don't want it to be just a basic wiggle leaf either. Now on these, you can, you know, pull it out here a little bit. And then turn it around. Yeah, see, I can just wiggle a little bit and just jag, give it jagged edges is what I'm trying, the word I'm trying to look for here. Maybe I shouldn't push this back a smidge. All right. I want you to be able to see the painting, but then I feel like sometimes I get my camera too close and then you can't see everything I'm trying to show you. Now, if you want to give, then you can come down here and just give it a sense of movement if you wish. You can actually do it to where it comes back up. I'm just giving it a sense of movement this way. I might go back down the other way too just to make the colors look a little similar. And you can just keep going back and forth and wiggling. And do the same over here. And then pull it down. And then come back around and do the same thing here. you like this. I hope you're as excited about the the frosted glass as I am. I was so excited when I saw it like oh my gosh that's perfect. Now you see you know I'm just getting adding the florals in and if you watch my videos you know I like my leaves. I love my leaves guys. I truly truly do. I'm going to come back around here add some up here I don't want to get too carried away or spend too much time on this part of it. Like I said, you can you know, do just some jagged edges on these. You can wiggle in and out like that if you want. My paintbrush is getting full. 
And too, when you're doing this kind of painting, you know, if you feel like your paintbrush gets really full, I mean, you can take some time to clean it. Just make sure you dry it good before you start painting again, especially when you're painting on glass, because that can actually weaken the paint some. If you've got water in it, never mix these paints with water. If you're painting on glass, you want it to be durable as much as possible, and, and paint, mixing them with, with uh, water will, will ruin that effect. You can definitely compromise it. All right, so let's start to, let's do some other ones here. Now, of course, I like, let scrape my paint off again. Having paper towels handy is probably a good idea. I don't happen to have any. I use old towels, but anyways. Okay, I like to, around my partially opened flowers most of the time, I like to put these simple little one-stroke, one-stroke leaves. Whoops. Go up like that. You can just make them really random. I don't want them to come up around it like it's a rose bud or something to that effect. But I like them to be around it some. And here we go again on this one. But I'll tell you one thing, this frosted glass stuff actually really gives a surface to paint on, that's for sure. It's a lot different. Just got to keep my brush nice and flat, crisp. Okay, like that. Now you can add some more. I just wanted to get those in real quickly, and then I'm, this is going to be my last, last group. And I'm just trying to make jagged edges, so however you feel comfortable doing it, it's not the only way to do it. You can go back and forth, you can stand up on the chisel edge and make them really jagged. Or you can do some that are jagged, and then I don't want them to look like poinsettia leaves, which is kind of how I feel like they were looking. You can kind of wiggle in and out if you want, like that. And just kind of make them wiggly, squiggly. Pour them down. Or you can swing that around and pour it down like that, or pull it down, maybe not pour it down. All right, finish these off. What I'm going to do is take my dotting tool, the dotting stylus. First, I'm going to go into the cinnamon. And I'm just going to do some dots towards the end. And you can go partially down. You can hit on the actual stem itself. I would do all these in one color and then go back and add additional colors if you are going to do that. You can keep it as one color. But I'm doing this so I do like to add more than one color. Just saying. You can dot the whole stem if you want or you can just do part of the stem like I'm doing. Kind of wipe that off a little bit and then I'm going to go back in and add some white. And you can kind of intermix them, make them big, small, give them some different sizes there. Teeny weeny, the big, the medium. Doesn't matter. And then come back over here and do this one. Teeny weeny to big. And then I'm going to go back in and do the pale yellow. And just a little bit. I mean, I don't need these, don't need to be like huge.
pretty easy and very pretty I think all right so here you go my first one with with the frosted glass and I'm loving it, it almost kind of reminds me of sea glass all right there you go if you like this video please make sure you give me a big thumbs up if you're new to my channel of course make sure you subscribe or subscribe make sure you subscribe to my channel hit that notification bell and then after viewing the video you'll see a share button underneath please make sure you hit that and share it on your social network with all your family and friends all right i appreciate your time and until the next one you have a good one mm -hmm.